Cephalosha returned to New York City with the Hawks on Thursday and said he was looking forward to just focusing on basketball again since he was arrested by the NYPD in an April 8th incident outside of a nightclub that left him with a broken leg and ligament damage to his ankle. Cephalosha has admittedly been unable to get the episode out of his head. You hadn't decided whether or not you were going to file a civil lawsuit. Will you? Well, we've decided to, to do file a civil lawsuit it's the city of New York, uh, the New York Police Department, and the officers that were involved. Why? Because there's a lot of unknown about how this will affect me two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. Earlier this month, he was acquitted of all charges. Stephen A., is he right to pursue this matter? He's absolutely correct, Molly Skip. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, is that he was assaulted. He was assaulted by uh, a police officer in New York City. Uh, there is no way around that. We've seen some of the video, uh, and it was, if you look at it, it was just completely unnecessary. Uh, you can point, you, you know, they can point to the fact that he was a large, uh, a seeming African American, even though he's from Switzerland. He's a black man. Uh, he was wearing a hoodie. Uh, you know, there were several police officers that grabbed him. Grabbing him is one thing. Kicking him and hitting him is an entirely different matter altogether. And by the way, keep in mind, this is while he was trying to extend some dollars to a homeless individual, point number one. And point number two, it was while he was out with his Atlanta, some of his Atlanta Hawks teammates celebrating, uh, celebrating having clinched the division crown. When you take those things into consideration and the fact that at least one of his teammates was with him and he happened to be white, yet nothing happened to that individual, but somehow, some way, it happened to Dabo Cephalosha, then there is no question uh, that, that that raises a red flag, it raises some eyebrows, um, and he is completely within his right to pursue uh, a lawsuit against uh, the NYPD, particularly when you consider in the fact that he's just months removed from, from winning his case because they actually tried to file charges against him as if he did something wrong. So that definitely raised another red flag as well. And I think it's important and it's incumbent upon me specifically on this radio show, I'm sorry, on this television show, sitting here in this chair, to acknowledge the fact that, again, these are not uh, isolated incidences. It doesn't appear to be the case, at least in the eyes of black Americans. The reality is, is that when it comes uh, to the issue of police brutality, I have spoken about this on several occasions. Um, I encourage people from all communities to obey the law, to understand that police officers are law enforcement officials, and you should listen to what they're telling you to do. You shouldn't be in their face. You shouldn't be spewing invectives or anything like that. You shouldn't be exacerbating any kind of situation because in most instances, if not all of them, you are going to lose eventually anyway when you cut when it comes up to you going up against the law so we have a responsibility to make sure that we're sitting up here on this t on this television show and make it to remind and to encourage people that law enforcement officials are who they are and it's their job to enforce the law it's our job as civilized individuals to obey the law and therefore obey police officers but it doesn't gloss over the fact nor does it eradicate the reality that there are police officers out there who are f a bit excessive. And in some instances, it's been fatally so. You know, don't get me started with Walter Scott in South Carolina. Don't get us started with Michael Brown. Don't get us started with this 16-year-old this teenager just the other day that was tossed over, you know, by a sheriff's deputy in South Carolina, forcing him to ultimately lose his job because he felt the need to be excessive in his physical behavior towards her regardless of what the circumstances were she wasn't a threat she certainly didn't put her hands on him and the fact is, is that this is a girl that just lost her mom recently and is a foster child none of that's taken into consideration in all likelihood because the officer did not know that but there's a lot of things that they don't know and if you don't pose a physical threat to a police officer there's no reason on earth for a police officer to be doing what the police officer did in, in the Dabo Cephalosha case, and obviously in the case that I just mentioned with the girl in uh, South Carolina. These are problems 
that have permeated the African-American community. It's something that's being talked about. It's something that needs to be investigated thoroughly and, and, and even more so. But there is no denying that there is a problem. There is no denying that even though everything can't be perfect about the Black Lives Matter movement in some people's eyes or whatever, as it pertains to the issue of police brutality, I don't want to sit there and, 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 and label or stigmatize or excoriate police officers because I know one thing, when I need help, I'm calling 911 and it's them. And by and large, they do the right things. And there are black police officers. So let's keep that in mind as well. This is not a race thing in that respect. But we have individuals with darker pigmentations, whether they are African Americans or in the case of Cephalosha, who's from Switzerland, that literally can make the case that there has been excessive behavior exercised against them and something needs to be done to address it. We can't keep quiet about it because the fact of the matter is it deserves a hell of a lot of noise. It's just that simple. I 1000% agree with everything you just said. Obviously, Stephen A. Smith, I cannot remotely identify with this situation the way you can. But clearly, I, I, I admire this man for pursuing this to the nth degree in the court of law because clearly this was police brutality and the injury that Cephalosha suffered could be career threatening. It was so terrible. It, 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 I, I have such sympathy for what he went through once this situation escalated to the point that it did. And I would applaud him if he pursues this to, the, to, to whatever he can in the court of law to get what, whatever justice he can get for himself given how this situation ended. But Stephen A., if you will, allow me to talk briefly about how this situation started. Maybe I'm out of line bringing this up. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you know and I know that my ongoing theme on this show has been nothing good ever happens after midnight in any kind of nightclub situation. And there is a moral to this story. If there's, there's anything we can take away from it that's constructive, there's an overlying moral to this story. Obviously, underlying this incident was, as you refer to, the escalate, escalating tension in this country between white policemen and black people, black-skinned people. Yet, how did it begin, Stephen A.? It's four o'clock in the morning. That, that next night, that, that same night of April the 8th, they have a game, and again, they had clinched, but they have a game coming up against the Nets. The Atlanta Hawks do. The Hawks at that point were 58 and 19, eight games better in the Eastern Conference than the second place Cleveland Cavaliers. So they are riding high. And I said at the time, I thought that Cephalosha and Antich had a responsibility to their teammates to avoid any situation that could put them in peril. So what happens? An incident breaks out in a Manhattan nightclub down in the, in the Chelsea area. And the police are there, and they're screaming at everyone in the club to, to quote Tabo, get the hell out, get the hell out. And they're rushing people out of the nightclub into the street, and he stopped, as you point out, to give $20 to a begging homeless man. And another policeman says, no, you got to go. Get the hell out of here. And Tabo said that, that he spoke to the policeman, engaged him in conversation, something in the vein of, y you can speak more nicely to me than that. Well, Stephen A., I, I think you'd be with me. There, there are times you just can't engage verbally with the police. No matter what the situation is, you just should go on, just move along. But then it escalated again. Then Cephalosha admits he got mad at one of the policemen, and, and he said to, the, to this one policeman, you're a midget and you're mad. And that sent that policeman over the edge into what I, I would see as police brutality. And all of a sudden, he's going to the ground, and a baton is flying. He's getting hit. He's getting kicked in the back of the leg, and he breaks his ankle badly. Now, to me, what's is there any... It, like, I, like I said, any constructive takeaway here? What were you doing out at 4 o'clock in the morning at the nightclub? And number two, if the police tell you to get the hell out, you just have to do it. You, you can't invite any more trouble. 
Is that fair? You've been in those situations before. Is that fair of me to bring up? Well, it's it's fair of you to bring up because consistently some of these incidents happen at that particular time of night. So I definitely get where you're coming from, particularly in this day and age. There appears to be a, a, a lack of respect and a appropriate level of decorum given to authoritative figures and adults by and large. We live in a society right now where that old school mentality of respecting your elders appears to have gone out the window where there are a lot of young adults that just don't do that. So generically speaking or theoretically speaking, you have a point, but it's not applicable as it becomes as it pertains to this Dabocephalosia incident in question. If you look at where he's standing, it's not just him giving to a homeless individual. I think it looked as if the person that he was with was literally lying on the ground. That's point number one. Point number two, yeah, the police officer is telling you to get out of here, but by virtue of the police officer telling you to get out of here, you have clearly been defined as somebody who is not a threat. Because if you were a threat, they would have handcuffed you, et cetera, et cetera. But clearly by telling you to get on out of here, that means they don't perceive you to be a threat because they're letting you walk away. So why would you then feel the need to gang tackle him? And while you have him down, Skip, you kick him in his ankle and on top of it all, you hit him with a baton. Sure. What is the reason uh, for that? So, so, so what I'm saying is, is that g generally speaking, your point is valid. If you want to avoid trouble, it would help not to be out so late, especially in this day and age with the way young folks in our society are tending to act. The flip side is, is right. that you still can't, ex you, and I know you were not doing it, but no one can excuse what we saw from these police officers because you had already deemed him not as being a threat. So basically because you said something to him and he said you don't have to speak to me that way and he called you a midget, that's cause yeah. to gang tackle him, no, kick him in the ankle, not. and beat no. him with a baton? Now, now, that's the point. And if you did that, and here's the key thing, Skip, if you did it with Thabo, with, with, with Thabo Cephalosha, who is not a threat, who you have classified no. as not a threat, meaning the police officers, not a threat. what are you doing to other people out there? that you could conceivably sit there and say, totally well, agree. we're not sure. That, that's where it comes in, and that's where the police officer has to be made accountable. I, I, I'm with you. My point is, because that's operating right now, just walk away from it. It's too dangerous. It's I agree. Too, I, I'm on your side. I'm on your side here. Don't, don't even tempt fate, because right. bad things could happen. Uh, unlawful things can happen. That, that was flat out police brutality. I'm with you. Once it went to the ground, all bets are off. In no way am I defending the policeman there. I'm just saying, can, can, if, if anyone's watching right now, please think about, don't put yourself in that situation. Try to avoid that kind of situation because bad things mm -hmm. happen. We agree. We agree. Unfortunately. Fair we agree. enough. Nothing good happens after midnight, but he did suffer physical and emotional scars, causing him, of course, to miss time from his job, and I applaud him for moving forward. He'll now sue for $50 million.